So guys, I got my man Brett here, uh, and he's actually got a pretty awesome looking forehand. A lot more modern than a lot of people our age. I'm 48, you're a little over 50, 60, I assume. 61. 61, wow, you look incredible. I hope I look like you when I'm 61, you. amazing. And so I'm filming a consistency challenge, seven day consistency challenge, because remember, the ball's not in, you can't win. And, and so Brett is the next person on the ball machine, and he was saying that a lot of his shots, because you've got a pretty extreme grip, right? I'd say full western grip, they end up going too short. He says he doesn't stay with the ball long enough. Now he actually ends up hitting a lot of nice forehands, which you're gonna see, but we're gonna do a drill that's gonna have him stay with the ball longer. So first of all, I'm just gonna put on the ball machine. We're gonna have Brett have some fun. You guys will take a look at his stroke and uh, we'll go through this. So here comes the ball machine going. You can see that ball land a little short. And that that's a perfect ball right there. So you can see he's got a modernized forehand. That time it was late. And that's a perfect shot. So he's going from perfect to short. So it's a little inconsistent. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here, Brett, right here is I'm gonna stop the ball machine. Throughout our consistency challenge, and if you wanna sign up, go to the description or go up in the card section, um, we're gonna be using this broom because uh, I sent out a survey and people said that they were too close to the ball and they also didn't have long enough contact with the ball. They felt like they were hitting the short ball short. So the first thing we're gonna do actually here, so you gotta go through some baby steps. I don't care what level you are. I went through all these baby steps today and I actually ended up hitting a great tennis ball. Brett, you actually said I was hitting the ball pretty good. Yep, you sure were. So Brett, I don't know if you guys hear him off the camera. He's like, yeah, but I tell you, a lot of these drills I did before really helped me. So the first thing I want you to do is I actually want you to stop your feet at the end of this broom and just work on going out. You're gonna start at contact. Now, since you've got an extreme grip, your ball is gonna go straight down, which we want, because it's gonna go over the net when we go to play, okay? So we actually want the ball going straight down with your grip. So all I want is, yeah, your racket out here and, and see if you can, you can go open stance if you want, right? So maybe go a little bit inside the broom and get there, or if you're gonna step in, stop at the end of the broom and just hit right over. Let's see if this ball is actually going over the broom. Let's see where it is going. Okay, so I gotta move my broom a little bit, so you're gonna adjust. So it's going right about there. So Brett's gonna move over a little bit. And now, all, yeah, all I want you to do is go out and touch the ball. Good, and feel like you're reaching out as far as you can. Get your hands out right away. Good, just hold your hands out. You're swinging too much. That's right, now see if you can do that and just contact the ball. That's right, you're swinging too much, just touch it. That's what I wanna see. And, and make sure you're touching it well, use your footwork, okay? okay? Good, can I borrow the racket for a second? See, so when we go to easy, we tend to like shut down our body. I still want you to be an athlete, be a tennis player, okay. and get the hands out here and just touch the ball. Yeah, out here, hands out here, touch it right in the center. Pretend it's a contest and you win a million dollars every time you put it right in the center of your strings. See, it's not as easy as you think. Right in the center of your strings, that's right. Full extension. That was your best one, can you repeat that? That, now he's getting the idea of the drill. Just touch it, good. See, now all of a sudden you're gonna start hitting it. You see that reach? Yeah. He's starting to reach now, guys. That, that's right, see, now it's start, now he's starting to find that contact easy. He's just hit two in a row deeper. So you see, your, your ball, your body's almost gonna adjust. You kinda go, oh, I get it, I get where the contact is. And you simplify it and you start reaching out. He hit two in a row nice and deep. Okay, now the, now the second thing we're gonna do today, we had about uh, eight or nine progressions in our day two on the forehand consistency challenge. But one of my favorites, and I think it's gonna help Brett a lot, is when you have a more aggressive grip, like our friend Brett does, let me borrow your racket again, is you tend to get here, and then since you wanna spin everything, you end up lifting up too soon and your ball's too short. Even with this extreme grip, if you watch Rafa hit, who's got the ultimate buggy whip, when you watch it in slow motion, he's still reaching way out here, like his arm's gonna come out of his socket, and then he starts to do this, guy.
is. So even though Brett's got this grip, his problem is, is he's spinning and lifting up too soon. I want him, we're actually going to start the, the broom behind the baseline because we want to head out in front of the baseline, but I've got it slightly behind the baseline. And then what he's going to do is he's going to try and hit through the broom. So I'm going to put this here and I'm, I'm lefty, so we're doing this righty, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay with the ball through the broom as long as possible. And you can see I did it there. I actually had a pretty good shot being a righty and I'm a lefty. So um, that's what he's going to focus on. So go ahead and see how long you can stay with the broom. That's right. Reach out through the broom. You're not worried about in or out. Oh. That's right. That's okay. Well, we'd rather hit him long oh. than short. See, now use your wrist. What I want, Brent, is whether they go in or out, you keep reaching through. Okay, reach out through that broom. That's right, You're, you swing a little slower and reach more. Good. You're swinging too fast. Yeah, I'm trying, I, it's hard for me to. Reach out and slow down. No, now you lift it up. Reach out and slow down. No, become an athlete. There you go, that's better. Do that again, more athletic. I want quicker feet in between shots. That's better. Quicker feet in between shots, reach out. Okay, a little bit of a timeout here. All right. Okay, so what he's going through is what most people go through. It's hard to get a combination of fire and ice, okay? As tennis players, we either have fire and fire or ice and ice, okay? And so when I tell him to slow down, his swing, his body also slows down. That's right. Okay, so I'm gonna put the, the uh, camera over here and I'm gonna show you, this is an important skill, it's easier said than done, but you wanna develop it so you can start to really find your hitting zones, okay? So uh, what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna move the camera over here. I'm gonna hit a couple. Is this okay for you? You liking this? Yeah, yeah. This is awesome. Hey, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Actually, let me start and stop it. Okay guys, so what I'm going to show you is something that's very hard for most people to do and that's to combine fire and ice. My feet are on fire, my hands are more ice. I don't mean being tight, I don't mean being stiff. I still want you to feel free, but I want you to slow things down and smooth things out. That's what the skill that Brett really needs to learn how to do. He tends to swing through too fast, so it's hard for him to find his ideal hitting zone. So we want to hit through this broom. So I'm on my toes and I want to reach out through the shot. You see, my feet are very active and I'm just focused on the drill of reaching out through the broom. I'm trying to reach out through the entire broom and the more I hit, now if they go out, that's a good sign because I want to reach. I want depth every time, which we're getting. Reaching out all the way through the broom and the more I say, the more I feel like I've connected with the broom, I hit through the court, I hit solid. Doesn't matter what grip you have either. I can go extreme topspin grip here, but still focus on reaching out. And I just had the extreme grip and I still hit the ball out deep through the court. Okay, here we go. There's your grip. Okay, so now he's gonna come around. We'll film him from the back. That's better. So now what we're looking at is how long can you reach through it? Get out to the court. That's right, I want you to reach out, get your hands out into the blue of the court. That was much better. Yes. Beautiful, out into the blue. Good, that's a good swing. Good, that's amazing. He's hitting, oh, he's a rock star now. <laughs> All right, one more good one. Good job. All right, yeah, you keep straightening a lot out. <laughs> Just lengthening out my stroke by staying on the ball longer. Oh, cool, we'll do like a little interview. Stay on the ball longer, that's a snap in my head. 
Hey Brett, so how did you feel about that lesson? Fantastic. Yeah, just uh, we met each other today. Uh, I told you about my forehand problems and in short order <laughs> you uh, analyzed it and man I just feel like there was a dramatic in increase in my consistency and uh, and confidence so thank you yeah that was an amazing job we literally just met each other yeah I watched him hit about five balls I'm like okay I see what's going on and the entire lesson was filmed okay so you guys are seeing the entire lesson the good the bad the ugly and you know it doesn't matter what grip you have as you can see there the more he learned to, to reach through and stay through it he kept his ball lower. A lot of people with extreme grips tend to complain they hit the ball too high and they don't get any penetration, which he was telling me. And they were going deeper. And he can get even better than that. Better than he was doing. He can keep trying to get out to the blue of the court. He can even reach out through the broom a little more and get even a little more on that. But you can see, he looks pretty darn good. We're super <laughs> proud of him. Make sure you sign up for the seven day consistency challenge. Because remember, the ball's not in. You can't win. We're gonna put a link up there and a link in the description. Great job, I'll let you have your court. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey, Pete here, and if you're a tennis player and you're out there and you're struggling with your consistency, it's driving you crazy that that serve's not going in or your forehand or your backhand's off and it's keeping you from winning matches and enjoying tennis as much as you'd like to, then I invite you to check out and join my seven day consistency challenge because we all know if the ball's not in, you can't win. Now the program is amazing and what I love about it is I've made a bunch of drills for you to eliminate your consistency killers. You can do these drills at home, you can do them with a ball machine, against a wall, even if you just bring out your basket of balls. I really went the extra mile for you in this challenge and filmed each and every scenario that you might be able to practice on your own. So what I want to do right now is bring you out to the court uh, so we can start working on some of these consistency killers. I did send out a survey not too long ago and you all wrote down all your consistency killers on all the shots. A uh, lot of them on the serve but the main two were the toss and the racket drop. But I would say toss is number one and you all were saying things like you know it's, it's keeping you from having fun, it's making you nervous and certainly affecting your ability to hold serve and win matches and in fact Colin writes in he says I have trouble getting a consistent toss and this is a consistency course uh, and then and then our next one was from Christopher and he says an erratic ball toss is probably my main issue so what I have inside day one I have one video that we actually used in serve tip week which is a 25 minute video on the ball toss but I've recently just come up with even more ideas on how to help fix your ball toss how to get that consistency killer eliminated and I think you're gonna find this pretty unique and you're gonna be excited and want to run out out to the court. So, so let's dive right in right now and start eliminating that toss consistency killer for you. Okay, so we've got great stuff on the toss. I have this video and another video I actually did during serve tip week that I think if you do these two, you are going to really improve your toss. Now, we're gonna be working a lot with a broom this week because it's gonna help us with our spacing. Spacing is one of the toughest things to get down and I've come up with some innovative ways to use this broom to really make sure we have proper spacing. Now, one of the toughest things to figure out is on the toss is is the ball in the right spot and and how high is it uh, that we need to toss you'll see in my other video we're using a uh, we're using a towel to really figure out where the toss should be but that's not really taking care of the height okay and so a big part of making sure we got nice spacing nice extension is to make sure we got the proper height so I thought of let's also add a broom into these exercises so that we can make sure we're in the right spot and we can start to work on finding that targeted area so let's get into this this is gonna be a lot of fun so let's take a look at this from the side guys see I got the ball out in front Right, you can come down here and kind of put a stake in the court and go, okay, this is, this is where I want to hit the ball, right out there, and just rise it up. And so you can take a look at where that toss needs to go. You just, you just observe it for a little bit. Then what you can do is figure out, is this hot, too high being at the very top or just about right? For me, it's going to be just about right. I think other people, you might want to drop it just a little bit. I think I like to drop it just a tad, okay? Not too much. So I'm going to look at that right out there. And then what I could do, put my racket down, 
this kind of can be my contact point here and I can practice committing to that toss out there, out into the court, trying to reach and be as close to the broom as possible. Okay, the broom's gonna move a little bit as you lift up your hip here, but it's still gonna be a good measuring stick so that you know that it's gonna be easy for you to find on your racket. Okay, you're not gonna be having to chase tosses if you can consistently match the broom and the ball up and they're relatively close together. If you do that, and you feel like you're really getting it to where you're like, man, this is like every time, it's money. It's right around where the bristles are. Maybe it's slightly higher, maybe it's right in there. Maybe a tad lower though, you don't want to be too much lower than your bristles, okay? So you either want to be around here or a little above it. If you can do that, you're going to find that you're not going to be having to chase your toss anymore. And you do that till you feel like I've really, really got it. It feels awesome. And then what you can do, is you can start to alternate and do three and three. So what you can do here is you get here, you get set, and you do one, two, three. Now all three of those were obviously very good. Now, since I, my body's warmed up and I feel that, I want to serve and feel as much like that toss. I mean, I want to feel as, I want to replicate that feeling and then toss the ball. And I don't want to be jumping or anything. I just want my feet on the ground so I can feel that. And then one more. And you can see that it worked pretty well. The balance was perfect. I didn't even have to move to hit the ball. And when you do that, it gives you all the confidence in the world. So I hope that you enjoyed that uh, consistency killer video. It's going to be up for just a little bit. Then we're going to take it down. We're going to show you just to give you a taste each and every day of what we're going through in the seven day challenge so you can decide if it's right for you. And uh, let's just think about that. That was definitely a different and unique practice, probably different than you're used to doing. What most people do is they have a bad day on the court. They have a bad match and especially the serves one of them where you could just grab a basket and you go out there and like, I'm just going to hit serves until I build my confidence back up and I'm feeling good. But we're really not fixing the problem. In fact, what we're doing often is just reinforcing bad habits. The more you do something wrong, it's going to continue to be wrong and it's going to continue to let you down in matches. So we want to make sure that we're really building good habits and, 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 and working smarter, not harder. I was lucky enough uh, just this last week to interview Mark Woodford and Gigi Fernandez and I asked them how do you, because they're great at volleying, and I say well, how are you so consistent with your volleys? Uh, Mark Woodford I've heard him say and Rick Leach and some other pros, you know, you should never miss a volley. I'm like, well how do you feel like that? And Gigi said because our technique was perfect and when you have flawless technique that builds the confidence and that makes perfect sense. I mean imagine if your toss was perfect and the ball is just there for you every time and imagine if you didn't have a pizza move that you knew that everything in the racket drop was right on target and the rhythm of everything that you're doing was right there and that your balance when you finish, well, you probably wouldn't have many bad serving days because everything is there in place for you to do. And there's actually a big debate in online instruction and, and I think people who follow online instruction is, is what's more important to really pay attention to and work on. Is it, is it strategy or is it technique? And I definitely think that both are important. You need both. Uh, uh, but it's all about what you're trying to do. If you are somebody who is a 3.0, for example, and you're just trying to figure out how to beat another 3.0 who's across from you on a certain day, well then strategy is probably more important. But if you're thinking more from the long haul, like, man, my serve lets me down, or my forehand lets me down, or my backhand is really weak, you know, strategy is not going to fix that. You've got to really work on your technique to get rid of these consistency killers. You've got to really identify what the consistency killers are. And I did that in the survey. You guys sent in the survey. I see exactly what is your problem. And I'm giving you specific drills that you can do at home, on the court, with a ball machine, with a wall. I filmed it all for you uh, with a basket of balls so you can go out there 100% on your own and you can do this stuff. I really went the extra mile and I, I also don't want you to skip 
the at home stuff, well I did it on the court. So either right before you're about to play or at home, I'm a big believer in shadow stroke. In fact, I, 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 the more I see what people are doing with shadow strokes, and I want to play a video with Adam here, who I just gave a lesson to, who basically has played a couple years in high school and just picked, it, picked up tennis again after when COVID hit, and his technique is awesome, and he talks about the power of shadow strokes. People are going to be jealous because, see, like he was telling me, he's only played uh, high school tennis, junior and senior year, then he stopped, he's 27 now, and he picked it up in February. And and he has improved so much. Wait till you see him hit a ball. He hits a great ball for somebody who's played so little tennis. But he say he attributes a lot of his success to going on YouTube, to scouring YouTube videos and lessons and video himself. So this is something I've seen a lot to where people who get obsessed with the game and they go and they really try and learn the game on YouTube and through instruction online, a lot of times they look a lot better than people who've been playing for years without doing this. So I'm super proud of you. So yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I mean, I just kind of find the videos that really speak to me and, and try to find the flaws that I know that I have from watching myself back and, and find the videos that really fine tune, you know, what those flaws are. And then I stand in my room and I shadow swing and try to figure out what that stroke looks like as to what they're doing, you know, and occasionally I'll find like one little tip, that's all it takes, you know, and you're like, oh, I wasn't doing that before. And then you figure that out you know, swing a hundred times and then get out on the court and try to put it into action. And so yeah. that's, that's what I've been doing. <laughs> well, so all the stuff we've been begging you guys to do, it, it's it's watching the, the videos on YouTube or getting a course. And so what I want you to do right now is take, take a look below at each day. We're gonna go through a serve challenge, forehand challenge, backhand consistency challenge. We're working on approach shots and volleys, pretty much all facets of the game. And uh, we're gonna be working in all areas to where you can be working at home, you can be working on the court with a basket of balls, with a ball machine. So take a look below. And uh, another thing we're gonna do is after all our drills is each day has a challenge because I also think something that's missing from your practice is baking in the pressure. It's so important to practice with pressure so that you can go out there and you know your numbers, it's gonna build your confidence and you're gonna be able to deliver better in your match play when the pressure hits you. So each day, I add in a challenge and if you successfully complete the challenge and actually want to send in your video, you can also win a $25 gift certificate to Tennis Express. So these challenges are awesome. Our members love them. We have people all the time writing in or leaving us video testimonials. So we've done these challenges. We love them. You can sign up below for either this, this challenge or you can also sign up and get the yearly pass, which is a much better deal when you think about it. You get all the challenges that we've had in the past and you get all the challenges going uh, ahead in the future. And so those will be instantly added, by the way, when you do become a yearly member, you're gonna have a lot of challenges that you can start going through as well as we're going to put up the day one challenge the serve challenge will be there we're going to be starting on monday uh, and another cool thing about this is since it is the holiday season we did this earlier in the year when covid first hit is we gave a portion of the people who signed up the portion of the money coming in we put that out and we were able to raise twenty five hundred dollars to the united way well i'd love to do something like that again this holiday season so i'm taking twenty percent of whatever comes in and we're going to give it away to united way for a good cause so that people can have a great holiday. So not only are you supporting your own tennis, you are supporting uh, everybody out there who, who needs help or at least we can impact as many lives as we can together. So I think that'll be awesome. Also, if you don't like my challenge, uh, I, I know you're going to love it, but for whatever reason, if you don't love my challenge, it does come with a 100% full money back guarantee if you're not happy. And the reason why I do that is because I really love the challenges, I believe in the work, and I also want to take all the risk off of you. And each and every day, you can communicate with me, you can send me your videos to compete for the gift cards to Tennis Express, you can also ask me questions, and you can uh, leave me audio and video messages, which is a, a a lot of fun. I really, really love these challenges. And so as soon as you sign up, what's going to happen is you're going to be sent to your registration page. So if you've never become a member before with me, you're going to set that up. If you're already a member, click the already a member just above where you, where you sign up your credentials and uh, you will log in and you will have access to day one of our consistency challenge, which is the serve challenge. That will be there instantly. We're going to start on Monday. 
And if you do become a yearly pass member, all the challenges that we've done in the past, I think we've done like seven or eight challenges already this year, uh, will be there. So you'll have lots of awesome material to go, go through. And if you do have any trouble at all, I want you to reach out to me through email. You can email me at crunchtimecoaching at gmail.com or you can call me at 770-990-8034. Please, please do not wait you know, days for, to, to say, I couldn't log in. Let me know right away. I don't want any frustration. If you get frustrated at all, even if you're frustrated for 10 seconds, email me and say, hey, I'm having some trouble. Can you help me? Because I want people to log in. I want you to have the best experience possible. I want you to love these challenges and they are great. They're a lot of fun and I can't wait for you to dive in. This is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching signing off. Let's get rid of those consistency killers and have a great time doing it. We'll see you inside the training.